this has to be the best mug ever. I mean, look. Hey, welcome back. Today I'm announcing my next big project. We're going to design and build a CNC lathe. So some of the reason behind this is that for my engineering degree, we had to do a dissertation. And my project was to design a small VNC. So I did all the research, design work, FEA, and I designed a pretty decent machine, well, in my opinion. And the plan was that I was actually wanting to build it, not as part of the final year project, but just for me. Um, because I need a bigger, better machine. Um, as I said before, my CNC mill is horrible. So I bought a lot of the parts, pretty much actually all the parts I've got. Um, the only ones I don't have are ball screws and all the big sections of materials. So like, you know, what I'd make the column out of and, and the spindle head, that kind of thing. But that's not the main problem. The main problem is that I don't have access to a big, a, a, yeah. The main problem is that I don't have access to a machine big enough to actually make any of these parts. So I'd need quite a big VNC or even, you know, a bridge port would probably do. So that project ended up going on hold for about a year now. Um, briefly, I thought about using a lot of the parts to make a CNC lathe, but it's still quite difficult to do without proper machining facilities. Especially depending on what you want. I was looking at building this layer around the same frame as the VNC, which was obviously still quite big and still very difficult to actually make. The other day I was thinking, I actually have some ball screws that I bought for a different project that never ended up happening. They're just the cheap, you know, C7 crappy ones. So I never actually thought about using them because I wanted something more accurate, you know, with less backlash. On top of this, CNC lathes have recently been on my mind because one of the guys that I follow on Instagram and YouTube, I'll put a link in the description, is building a micro lathe and it looks amazing. Like, it's sort of this big and honestly, amazing. So after browsing all of his pictures and most of his videos, I felt pretty inspired. I thought, you know, I should tackle this lathe project. Where I'd have used the ball screws that I had and all the rest of the stuff that I'd already bought for the VNC. And I'll design it in such a way that I don't need a big machine to make it. Which I probably should have done in the first place. But, you know, whatever. So the plan was I'd borrow a lot from the VNC project. That cuts down massively on designing. Or at least the time it takes to design. But I designed all that in SolidWorks. And I'm going to design this in Fusion 360, so even though I can import the models, I'm still going to have to do most of the assembly. So I haven't cut down that much. But, you know, it's better than nothing. So this is the design that I have so far. Um, first thing you'll notice is it's obviously not finished yet. We still need to stick in ball screws, all the associated bits and pieces, bearing blocks, ball nuts, that kind of thing. As well as um, pulleys. Uh, belts, belt tensioners, and an encoder. Oh, and the uh, step motors. So it's built off a granite surface plate, and uh, the reason why is because that's a nice reference flat surface, uh, which should help me with accuracy, as well as the fact that I can't actually machine a base that big. Uh, I, just, I just don't have the machines to do it. So that should be a nice shortcut there. Uh, second thing is possibly unusual is that the axes are separate. So normally you'd have the x-axis riding on top of the z-axis. But I've decided to separate them because, like I say, I have this flat surface, this reference surface, that I can stick these on and that should make it nice and flat. There. That should make it nice and accurate, I should say. This spindle motor is way too big. Um, I don't have much of a choice because this is the spindle motor that I bought for the VNC and I'd rather not have to buy a new motor. So I'm just going to have to make it work for now 
but ideally I'd like to replace that with a um, AC servo motor probably possibly I don't know maybe a maybe a brushless servo or something like that um, that way it would also allow me to do fourth axis and indexing um, I know well I've heard about people doing uh, indexing with an induction motor and an encoder uh, I'd need a brake as well um, obviously an induction motor has no holding torque so it would need a brake but that could work if we wanted uh, indexing but you can't get uh, fourth axis work synchronized motion that kind of thing with with an induction motor motors that I plan using for the axis are stepper servo motors um, they're basically stepper motors with an encoder on the back that feeds back to the drive not the controller um, so you can argue whether that's actually useful or not um, and they are NEMA 34 which you can see here is pretty huge well maybe not too big but we oversized for, for this project um, like I said they were off the, the VMC project so they're what we have and what we want to use but ideally I would like to replace them with um, something smaller maybe NEMA 23's brushless servos ideally maybe the uh, nice little uh, clay paths that exist I wouldn't mind having some of them right uh, let's discuss the spindle so the spindle housing is just one big chunk of aluminium um, it's one it's 140 mil square bar by 150 mil depth um, so for imperial that is about five and a half inches by five and a half by six uh, the plan is to stick this on the cross side of my lathe and line bore it. That should keep everything nice and concentric. It means I don't have to spin this giant chunk of material, which would be quite frankly terrifying and probably a horrendous idea. Actual spindle is probably just going to be cold wall steel. Um, it has a 40 mil through hole, which is pretty big. Um, which is nice and at the minute it has an ER40 collar chuck on the front ideally I would have liked it to be in 5C that's what I was originally going to use um, because it's easier to have sort of automated opening and closing of a 5C collar that's not to say it's going to be impossible to do with this ER40 I could probably think up some weird convoluted mechanism of you know undoing and, and uh, tightening this collar so that we can uh, feed bars through um, but it's not ideal but again it'll, it'll do for now maybe we'll change it later maybe we won't the whole point of designing a machine this way is that anything can be replaced and it's not the worst in terms of cost uh, for example the spindle assembly is probably going to cost more than about 200 pounds that's including sort of material um, bearings not including machining time because I'm the poor tool that has to make the thing and I don't pay myself anything. So the next most important thing is the spindle bearings. So at the minute in this design we are using tapered roller bearings. Nice big beefy tapered roller bearings. That's not to say there's anything wrong with them. Um, they're about 30 quid a piece which isn't horrendous. Um, I'd rather not have to spend that much money but they should be totally fine what I also have are these which I kind of want to use NSK Super Precision P3 angular contact bearings so this these ones are 7013 um, P3 super precision bearings, equal to all. So the idea is here is that these are matched for a light preload. So you stick these back to back, and the clearance between them is already set so that when they get pulled together, there's a light preload. 
what I worry about is that the live preload is not going to be enough, it's not going to be rigid enough for a lathe spindle. Um, what we could do is mount them in the same way as the tapered roller bearings, so we'd have one on either end. Uh, that would mean that we could set the preload ourselves, whereas originally we would have sort of these two at the front and then I have another set of super precisions that could have been the rear bearings, like so. Um, but let's say the preload is light, which might not be enough. I could set it myself, but the worry is, is sort of well, I could have it where there's one at either end and I could set the preload myself, but the worry is that angular contact is fairly sensitive to preload. I could just end up destroying the bearings um, you know, overheating them, that sort of thing, whereas tapered roller bearings aren't as sensitive to preload. Uh, the whole reason why I would like to use these super precisions is because I want an absolutely fantastic surface finish, which I might not be able to get as good with the tapered roller bearings. The question is whether the, with the tapered roller bearings it's going to give me a, a really, really nice surface finish anyway, and the super precisions will give me a little bit better, in which case I don't care. So the two main parts, the headstock plate and the table, are going to be made out of aluminium tooling plate. So this is the cast aluminium, it's cast and then machined flat. And the reason why is because it's pretty cheap and it's already pretty flat. If I wanted to get a piece of cast iron or steel in that section, uh, I, could, I wouldn't be able to machine it myself. I don't, I don't have the facilities to do that. So as far as I know, the flatness tolerance is 0.1 mil, which isn't great, but it's not too bad either. And that's about five thou. So 0.1 mil, you know, you could scrape it flat and parallel. Um, it's aluminium, so removing that much material by scraping wouldn't be too difficult, but I'm not exactly particularly experienced. Uh, I've only scraped two or three times before and once in aluminium. It went okay. It was it was acceptable. Um, but you know, I'd, I'd be willing to give it a try if it's necessary. Like I say it depends on the on the parallelism. There, it depends on the parallelism more than the flatness really, um, because it is going on sort of linear uh, bearings. So the problem you'll notice is this motor is kind of too long. Um, you know, if we have tools over here, we can't have them colliding with the motor. Um, and equally I don't want to make the spindle much longer. My lathe only has 400mm between centres and that's not a lot really. At the minute the spindle is um, about 200 I think, 217mm long, which is doable. Um, I could get away with that in the lathe, I don't want to make it too much longer. Um, we are going to have to make it a bit longer because um, we need to have a pulley on the end. And I haven't said what I'm doing with the pulley yet. Originally what I was going to do is I was going to cut uh, poly V grooves directly into the actual spindle. Um, that solves one problem which is that if I want to stick a pulley on this um, how do I do it? Normally there'd be a keyway, but if I stick a keyway in, I need to worry about having this all balanced. Really, I want this to spin about five, maybe 6,000 RPM. And at those speeds, you start to worry about balancing a bit. And, you know, keyways or clamps or anything like that, it's gonna throw it off. Which is one of the reasons, which is, yeah. Which is why I thought that using it, that put, cutting the grooves directly into the pulley would help. The problem is that the spindle needs to be extended further out to actually, you know, get anywhere near the shaft of the of the motor. And if we inspect it, we can see that there's a difference of 28 mil. Well, th let's just hit 30. So that's not too bad. You know, we could, we could do that. Um, but really, I want to avoid making the spindle any longer, especially because. The distance between the bearings is only 150 mil, and any further out increases the moment. You know, you're pulling with the belt all the way over here, um, 
you know, it, it, it twists everything, it puts loads on the load on the bearings. So I want to keep that as short as possible. Of course, this wouldn't be a problem if I was using a servo motor because it would be much smaller rather than this giant induction motor. So the ball screws I plan using, let's say, are the crappy C7 extra inaccurate import grade. Barely does the job. Uh, I have one of them here, and what I've done, because I bought three of them, is I've taken one of the nuts off one of them and put it onto this one, so now I have two, and what I plan on doing is preloading them against each other to take out the backlash. The bearing blocks that come with the ball screws, and what they've used is deep groove ball bearings. These things. And the problem is, is... There's no preload. So first of all, really you want to be using angular contact bearings for ball screw mounting because deep groove really can't take that much thrust load. And second of all, there has to be preloaded to take the backlash. If you've ever held deep groove ball bearings and you try to rock them back and forth axially, you can feel that there's quite a bit of play in there, and that'll show up as backlash in the system. Uh, you might think it's in the you know a ball screw and the ball nut, but it'll actually be in the bearings. What we can do is we can sort of shim these to try and preload them if we want or you can set it up on a magnetic chuck and grind sort of the outer race on either one so that when they get pressed together they have preload. That would be one way of doing it, um, either with the deep groove or with the angular contact, ideally with the angular contacts. Or you buy a mashed pair of um, preloaded angular contacts to start with but again they're expensive. The plan is, is we're going to stick with the deep grooves for now and um, we're going to see how bad it is in terms of backlash. If necessary we're then going to grind them to see how good we can get it um, and then run them until they inevitably self-destruct from too much thrust load. So that's that plan and then eventually we'll have to replace them with angular contacts anyway. So we need an encoder on this, um, obviously this is a lathe, we want to be able to do all the fancy things like threading and that. So we're going to need a spindle encoder. Ideally I'd like to stick it on the motor somewhere, but I don't think that's going to be possible. So what we might do is sort of have it around here. I already have an encoder, um, which is designed to be fit onto a shaft. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to make sort of a you know a pulley shaft bearings little sort of enclosed uh, device um, attach it to the spindle head in some way with possibly another pulley coming off um, just just for the encoder. Next biggest problem is what we actually want to do with the tools. So at first I was just going to run it as a gang lathe. Which I could do, you just stick toolbox tools directly onto this table. They run in, that indexes along whichever tool it wants. Everyone's happy. But this plate isn't very wide and you'd only get, you know, not very many tools. Now I actually really like the idea of what Greg did. What he did is he put two turrets. He has one turret right at the front here with all his turning tools and he has one turret back here which has all the boring tools in the drills which I think is a great idea um, so I might do that or for now what I might do is put one um, turret and then maybe gang the drills that could work um, but let's say tool holding is not the biggest problem um, obviously once you have everything made you can figure out tool holding you know last minute but what's the plan then the next part is to obviously to finish the design uh, we need to get the ball screws in the bearing blocks uh, finish all these pulleys arrangements that sort of thing make my mind up on what I'm doing about these bearings one thing to actually note is these you see at the minute I have this as wide as possible which is good because it stops this from rotating as much. There's less of a moment. 
It's bad because it leaves this to stag more. Obviously, this is the more, longest unsupported lane. So there's a bit of a trade off there. What I might do is I might do some FEA simulation testing to see how much that deflects. Um, I've never used Fusion 360's FEA before, but I hear it was pretty good. So I might give that a go. Other than that, like I say, finish up with the design. I want to order all the material in one go to save money on postage. But once I've done that, I think we're pretty golden to get started. So as always, I appreciate all comments and suggestions. Uh, if you have any ideas, if you have any thoughts, I'd love to know people's ideas on the super precision angular contact bearings versus the taper roller bearings. Whether I'm going to get you know a difference in rigidity or a difference in surface finish, you know a difference in run out, that kind of thing. So if you like the idea of this project, please like and subscribe. There's going to be a lot more videos to come showing every little step. I'll probably be posting the Fusion 360 files. I mean, if you want to make your own layers. Uh, if I were you, I'd wait until I made all the mistakes first. Um, <laughs> just so that you don't make the same mistakes I do. But thanks for watching. Like I say, please like and subscribe for more videos to come. Cheers.